Welcome to Fantastic Four. My name's Devon Sanders, and today we have a very special guest. His name is Howard Chaikin, and you name it, he's done it. From his own creator-owned series, American Flag, to Batman, to Punisher, to Blade, he's done it. And we're very happy to have him here today. So, just to How you ask, doing, guys? Pretty good. Yeah, um, I mean, uh, you list my credits, and I realize in listening to that, that to a profound extent, I'm like, I consider myself the great American comics journeyman. Okay. Okay. Because unlike a lot of my colleagues who are committed to doing this sort of book or that sort of book, uh, one guy's a Western guy, one guy's a war guy, I feel I can provide work of that quality, of, of a certain quality, on any kind of genre I'm, I'm, I'm confronted with. Right. Uh, which makes me an odd bridging link to the previous generation. Because mm -hmm. the, guys, the guys who I read growing up were guys who could do anything. They did westerns, they did war, they did romance, they did science fiction, superheroes. But the only thing I can't feel comfortable doing is teenage comedy and, uh, and funny animal stuff, because I just suck at it. <laughs> right. When I started writing my own stuff, mm -hmm. was that there was a niche that had not really been filled in comics. Right. And that I felt comfortable trying to find a way to evolve uh, an effective anti-hero. Okay. In comics, um, there really hadn't ever been, which is an odd thing when you think yeah, about it. Yeah, there really hadn't. Because it exists across the board in, in in fiction of all sorts, in film and television, less so in television, but certainly in film. Right. And the idea of doing a hero whose motives and agenda were suspect was a brand new concept, and I was unaware that it hadn't really been around, and I just went and, went and did it, and that was what got me going. Right, because I remember back when, like, American Flag first came out, you know, there really wasn't sort of, like, the anti-hero wasn't necessarily a thing that was sort of being thrown out there in the comics. As far as I know, nobody was doing it. Right. Um, the truth is, it's it seems to me that when I was asked by the people at DC why I had not pitched them Flag, I said to them that I felt that the baggage the company had would have interfered with doing a book like that. Right. And I felt, in, in likelihood, it was the fact that it was done for a company like First Comics, which had no history right. and no baggage, that it wouldn't interfere with what had been the branding trademark of that company. Okay. So there was a freedom, a, a sort of like, oh, whatever mm -hmm. kind of sensibility. And once I did that with that book, I felt that had become a part of my repertoire. Right. And I proceeded to do it elsewhere and with other materials. Right. You mentioned earlier that you, you kind of consider yourself like comics' sort of ultimate journeyman. Yes. So, does Superman to this day, like, does it still have the same appeal to you as it might have, like, when you might have picked it up when you were, like, maybe 10 or something like as that? As a reader, you mean? As a reader. No, not yeah. really. Um, okay. I, I mean, I was always a Batman guy anyway. Right. Um, I mean, when, once I, once I, I got over power and got into sex, Right. Uh, Batman is about sex, Superman is about power. Right. Um, and... But I mean, I, I was an absolute obsessive comic book superhero fan when I was a kid. I loved Santa Jack stuff. I loved I loved the DC stuff. I was a Golden Age collector of DC and Marvel. Uh, I like observed reality. Right. Um, so I, I like characters operating in the real world. That's why one of the reasons I love doing The Punisher with Matt Fraction. Mm -hmm. Why I had a great time doing Blade with Guggenheim. Right. Because both those guys wrote great real world places and sensibilities. I right. really dug that. Cool. Well. A lot of people may or may not know this about you, but you used to share studio space with Frank Miller right. and Walt Simons right. and Jim Starlin. Mm -hmm. Like, when you're like in that environment, are you just totally in that environment and you're just like, okay, I gotta get the work out there? Or did you know that you were like part of something that a lot of people would consider incredible? I never thought about it. You know, I mean, I, I got there at seven in the morning and left there at six o'clock at night. Right. And, um, it was a, it was a great working environment. We all had great fun. You know, we had we had Dean Haspiel and Larry O'Neill were also our assistants. Right. You know? It was a, a great time. I mean, I was in my twenties and early thirties, and it was just bitching. <laughs> it was a great time. But no, I never thought of it in those terms. I, 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 I don't to this day. Okay. You know, I mean, I um, you know, for me, I my relationship with comics is you know, for you, it's every week, every Wednesday at the comic book shop. For me, it's every morning on my desk. Okay. And and I love to work. I like being available for the work so I'm grateful to have the work yeah and like I just noticed uh, that you have like some Catwoman stuff coming up a job I did five years ago really yeah it's, been sitting, it's been sitting there in inventory for five years oh wow yeah I'm so delighted it's getting I only found out it was getting, getting published 
about a month ago. I was in New York City and I, I noticed it was put on the schedule. I was like, oh, hey, then I'm at it. Yeah, he's really you, pleased. Well, you've got like a, a, a huge history within comics and I just noticed, well, that, like you said, with Wikipedia, I didn't know that you had drawn Star Wars. But the work was terrible, right. so it's okay. <laughs> no, but like you're still tied into that. So it's like, do you still see yourself as like when you're doing this type of thing, it's like tying into something greater no. or is it just the no. No, I mean, there's a song by uh, by Cole Porter, another opening, another show, okay. and that's what it's all about. Okay. It's like, get up in the morning, start something new. Okay. You know, um, I worked on the plane coming in, I worked on the train coming down from uh, New York City. I work on the train going up tonight, and I work on the plane going home. I got a whole bunch of different projects going at the same time because it's like, it's the way you do it. Right? You got to be able to roll over. All right. And, um, you know, I just love the work.